Don't be alarmed, it's widely known, but up until now, Apple kept an encryption key for things like our personal photos and messages stored on their iCloud servers. And that meant that if we ever forgot our passcode or otherwise locked ourselves out of our accounts, Apple could help recover that data for us. But side effect, that also meant a government could subpoena those files or a supervillain could theoretically break in and steal them. But now, now, in the US and in more places over the course of the next year, we'll have the option to turn on advanced data protection and turn off Apple's ability to access those things on iCloud, literally make them throw their key away. Then, just like our personal health data and passwords have been, our photos and messages will be utterly, completely locked down. But here's a big question, should they be? should we actually turn advanced data protection on? And I've personally talked to a ton of InfoSec people over the years, heard all about the potential attack vectors and threat levels, really eye-opening, brain-bending, terrifying stuff. Why absolutely everything needs to be locked down all the time, always, which honestly lit up all my happy paranoia buttons. But then, then I talked to some data recovery experts and they told me a very, very different story one that stopped me cold. Because here's the thing, here's the current narrative. If you don't have strong encryption on everything, your local drives, your backups, your online accounts, then if the worst happens, if someone hacks into your accounts or subpoenas them or breaks in and steals your phone and your laptop, your desktop right out of your home, you can replace those devices, sure. You can regain access to your data, but one day you might be browsing Reddit or wherever and see yourself, all of yourself, your intimate photos, your private messages, your code, your client lists, everywhere. And there's no way to take that back, not ever. Just everything embarrassing, legally damaging, and potentially career ending all online, all naked and afraid on the internet. Which is why information security experts keep telling us data theft is such a growing threat and why we're better off encrypting everything and making sure if anything fails, it fails secure rather than safe. But here's a dirty little secret that nobody's talking about. If you do encrypt everything, drives secured, backups in the vault, online accounts locked down, and a different worst happens, like a fire takes out your phone, your laptop, your desktop, your house, and if you lose your two-factor keys or your drives are all damaged, you can get new devices, you can get new drives, but you may never be able to regain access to your accounts or recover any of that information. Not your wedding photos or the videos of your kids, not the text history or the final voicemail from before your parent died, not your family records or digital wallet, that big client project or the stock footage vault you plan to retire on. Nothing, none of it. Because without working keys, all your data is rendered into the equivalent of pseudo-random strings and binary blobs. I mean, that's literally how ransomware works. Your data gets locked away where you can't get to it with the attackers hoping you're desperate enough to pay them anything just to get that access back, which is why data loss is what many backup and recovery experts will tell us affects far more people far more frequently than data theft and why for some types of data, fail safe is just way, way better than fail secure. And that's the problem. That's the paradox. And I've felt it. I've had accounts compromised from major retailers, platforms, and providers, but I've also been locked out of my own two-factor accounts and had encrypted drives fail on me, which is why all of this is just so much more complicated and nuanced than encrypt all the things. And there are no easy answers because no matter what you choose to do or not do, there is some level of risk. And I know that's not a pretty clean, easy story for most places to cover, but it's one that we really need to understand. Because now, yes, if you decide to lock everything down, you'd be safe from subpoenas and data theft. You know, someone mission impossibling their way into Apple's data centers just to get Apple's keys and get at our data. We're basically secured against anything this side of Rise of the Machines, and nobody, just nobody can get in and take our stuff short of burning a million dollar zero day exploit or the advent of quantum computing. Unlike when we take on the responsibility for data recovery ourselves, Apple's providing for both old school recovery codes 
ones that you can print out and store in a desk drawer or a lockbox or a safety deposit box, depending on your own personal physical threat model, or newfangled recovery contacts so that a family member or friend can receive the equivalent of a two-factor code to pass on to you so that you can lock back into your accounts. And in a perfect world, that kind of system should be proof against anything short of like an alien invasion with mass drivers, just an extinction level event. But this world, like most backup and recovery plans, is just so far from perfect. Recovery keys get lost, family and friends flake out on us. And in that case, if those backups weren't completely locked down, if you'd left Apple with a copy of the key, you'd have the option for getting the data back, even if it was a time consuming tech support, searing pain in the ass of an option, but the cost may be far less than our priceless memories and documents, which I know still sounds just all shades of complex and confusing. So here's what I do, what I personally do. I use encrypted messaging, but not for email because encrypted email is still a huge hassle. And so I conduct myself accordingly. I do encrypt my laptop drive because I travel with it and I don't like the idea of it being lost or stolen and someone having access to all of my accounts and my data, but I don't encrypt any of the drives that store backups of my video projects for this channel or like my family photos because those are far more valuable to me than to anybody else. And I need to be able to recover those for professional and personal reasons. I don't worry much about online backups, but I do encrypt some files prior to upload so I know they're totally secure. But for the vast amount of my stuff, it's all totally non-sensitive and I'm not worried about subpoenas, but I am worried about not getting access to it, especially and in including when I'm traveling. So if you're a celebrity or a journalist or a politician or a dissident, if you're involved in shady side hustles or yes, a spy, and you have a higher threat level for any reason, then you'll want, you'll need a system just far, far stricter than mine. And by all means, you totally and utterly encrypt you. Encrypt absolutely everything that you'd rather lose access to than have stolen. That would just ruin you if it ever got out. And don't encrypt absolutely anything that you'd rather have stolen than lose access to that would ruin you inside if you no longer had access to it. And then set yourself yearly or even monthly reminders to revisit which is which because technology changes just all the time, including AI, which from generative art and stylized profile pics to text prompts that can write us almost everything, the first draft of almost everything. It's just, it's everywhere right now, which is why I'm personally so thankful for Brilliant making college level science and technology courses available to you, to me, to everyone all the time in just the most intuitive and engaging ways possible to learn algorithms, computer science, math, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, and more all in a visual hands-on way. And you can get in on the ground floor with introduction to neural networks, no pressure, no grades, just puzzles, almost games that are so incredibly satisfying when everything falls into place and you get it right, you learn. And Brilliant has thousands of lessons just like these with new exclusive content being added every month. So you never have to stop learning, you just have to start. And that's the secret, that's the thing. Everyone starts somewhere and you can get started right now, today, for free. Just visit brilliant.org slash Renee or click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So just click the button on the screen or go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does checking out this video on an even bigger game changer for online security, Passkeys. Give it a watch and I'll see you in the next video.